You might see Bioshock Infinite is a must play, just as much as Hamlet is a must read. But we're pretty sure you didn't know that by playing Bioshock Infinite, you can, at least in part, do both. This is British Cultural Studies TV, and today we're gonna show you where Hamlet hides in Bioshock Infinite. And by the way, we will talk about the content of the game, so there may be some spoilers up ahead. The action of Bioshock Infinite is set in the year 1912 in Colombia, a fictional state city which had seceded from the US and was now located in the sky, literally. Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. In the game, you play as Booker DeWitt, a private investigator sent off to Colombia to bring back a girl named Elizabeth. Sounds like your average damsel in distress plot, alright, but where's the Shakespeare? Well, remember that early cutscene where we have to toss a coin? Let's watch it again. Heads. Or tails. Come on, let me through. Heads. Or tails. Tails. This cutscene is a clear reference to Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, a 1966 play based on Shakespeare's Hamlet. The play shows us the events of Hamlet from the perspective of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, and it begins with the two betting on coin flips, with Rosencrantz betting heads each time, thus winning 98 times in a row. Talk about luck, right? Well, not really, because this is an absurd display, you know, like the ones by Beckett and UNESCO, and the point of the coin tossing scene is to show that the laws of the world of the play are not the same as those of the real world, that in the play the laws of probability, as we know them, don't apply. Bioshock Infinite uses the same trick to suggest to the more erudite player that the laws of probability of the world we live in are different from those of the world of Bioshock Infinite. Here's how. In the early stages of the game you come across two characters, the Lutus siblings, who ask you to toss a coin. One of them is wearing a chalkboard with two columns, one for heads and one for tails. The two seem to be betting on coin flips and the result is always heads. Notice how when he turns around the board indicates a great number of tosses, and if you count all of them you get 98 like in the play, and you get the toss for the 99th time. So if no matter how much you try the result is always the same, then this means that in the world of Bioshock Infinite there is no self-determination, and no matter what you do, you end up with the same outcome. This is an idea that was crucial for the first Bioshock game, released in 2007, which focused on the illusion of free will. But how does this tie in with other aspects of the game? And first of all, why does the game use Shakespeare to ready the player for the unexplainable? What is there about the year 1912 and America? And how do philosophical ideas about free will and self-determination influence the game? Study these aspects and more at the British Cultural Studies MA program.